collectibles. But I mean, if he's healthy and he he's you know he doesn't have the off field stuff hanging over his head, if he's able to show himself that he's a clear guy, a clean guy, and he's you know he's he's committed to football. I think he's a day two player, second or third round, but I, I think that he's going to have a huge slide, unfortunately. No, and and then that's something that we were uh, that we've all been thinking. I mean, the talent is is off the charts. He with when he has the football in his hands, he's one of the best in all of college football. Um, but yeah, there there's just so much going on outside of of the football field. Okay, I think this is the last two, unless I already asked you. Uh, Trayvon Hill and Trajan Bandy. Trajan Bandy, I think, is a day three corner um, nickel specialist, so it, it could go anywhere between four to seven. I feel like fifth round is probably the sweet spot. I really do like Trajan a lot. I just feel like he's just limited to one role. There's there's no real ability for him to play outside it. I think he weighed at like five seven and seven eighths or something like that. Like there's just no possibility of him playing outside. So uh, him there, and then. Um, uh, Trayvon Hill, like, like I said before, he's an undersized edge player who didn't have a great 2019 and then tested poorly for his size. So Andre at the free agent. Well, thanks, man. That's uh, wow. That's pretty uh, comprehensive. That's good stuff. Um, so Marsh, Marsh was going to ask you about uh, your Greg Rousseau article. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's something that. Um, you know, I, I've been I, I love Gregory Russo. I think he is I think he's going to be a top ten pick. I think he's just absolutely incredible. Uh what he was able to do in twenty nineteen. Starting he didn't even start until uh till week six, I believe. But yeah, we we love Russo around here. And so you had the chance to to not just write an article on him, but to interview him as well, correct? Yes. Yep. Got to sit down with him, had probably about like a fifteen, twenty minute conversation with the guy. Good deal. Good deal. So just, I mean, right off the bat, tell us about uh, how the interview went and uh, what, what it was like chatting with big old Greg. Yeah, I mean, so it's really weird for guys of that status and that caliber, all American guys. Sometimes they're like a little standoffish. And I have to say, just from a character perspective, Greg was awesome, man. Like he he was really fun and funny. And he was he was very, you know, just I mean, I've reached out to him and he was just like, yeah, man, anytime you want. So he was a really easy guy to talk to. I really just enjoy the interview because that's honestly my favorite part of you know what I do is just being able to hear people's backstories and getting a little deeper gl- glimpse into them as people and Greg checked boxes for me from that perspective I, I really honestly enjoyed it it was uh one of my favorite one of my uh, favorite interviews I would say for for uh for a while now He's, he was an awesome guy overall yeah he I mean for for the for the amount of success that he had <clears throat> he had in 2019 I mean he, Rousseau's just a real, real humble guy, um, yeah. and then that's why you know so many Canes fans love him. He's not, you know, that what a lot of people think of Miami Hurricanes being loud and everything. He's he's a very, very humble guy. Um, do you think that there? Or let me ask you this: What do you think sets Rousseau apart from other defensive ends, and even you know the top defensive ends returning in 2020? I mean, so the first thing that pops off, obviously, is, I mean, like you said, the first few games, he was only playing, he even tell, told me, between 15 and 20 snaps a game. And then, I mean, he still ended up with 15 and a half snap, sacks, so 19 and a half tackles for loss. Like, the production obviously pops off. Him, from a physical perspective, you, the, I mean, he's six seven, long arms. Like, you, you see that stuff very easily. But the thing that I think really separates him and, and makes him a potential fit on any type of defensive scheme is – that dude has some transitional quickness. He moves in short spaces very quickly for a guy that's six foot seven. And usually those guys take a lot longer to get from point point A to point B. So he has that. You, I mean, Miami used him all up the defensive line. I saw him in a, a zero true nose. I saw him at three tech. I saw him, you know, playing some five, seven, all the way out to nine, like use him all over. He's kind of that chess piece. And, you know, an athlete of that size, you don't see too often. So, I mean, here, like the Miami Hurricanes fan base, we uh, we know how to manufacture some hype, and we uh, we often get ourselves to, you know, amped up about things that aren't necessarily realistic. In my mind, and I'm guilty of this too, but uh, in my mind, I, I I see potential for him to go like, 
first round, you know, even top half of the first round. Do you see that too? Or, or what are you kind of expecting? Um, obviously, he's got another year to play, but but what are you thinking happens next year in the draft with Greg Rousseau? I mean, if, if everything goes, goes, you know, the, the trajectory it's going, I mean, the dude is super talented. It, it would not surprise me at all if he's the next top five, top 10 pick with that size and length. I mean, it, everything is there, honestly. I, I you know, obviously I, I don't do an official breakdown or your scouting report on him, you know, because who knows if he's even coming out next year. But the glimpses, I mean – Six seven, two sixty plus. That athlete, like, it's hard to imagine him not going first round somewhere. Bro, that that just got me so hyped because I cannot tell you. I mean, you're you're an NFL draft guy. You know that the Miami Hurricanes once dominated the first round. Yes. And it has been a very long time. I don't even know the last guy we had in in the top ten. And I and I really. Really do think Russo is a, a top ten talent. Um, I think Eric Flowers wasn't he like thirteenth, like something like that. Yeah, yeah, he was. He was around. actually not. I think he might have been like ninth. That might be oh. your answer right there. Yeah. All right, look at Ryan showing <laughs> us the Canes facts. Um, I know you. I know you wrote this in your article, and, and I read the article. It was a great piece. Um, so I already know the answer to this. Um, but explain who you would compare Russo to in the NFL. Yeah, so so I went back to uh, some Jason Pierre Paul a little bit coming out of South Florida, and like if, for people that don't remember, you know, everyone just thinks about the, you know, the the fireworks stuff or whatever. But like him coming out of South Florida, that dude at six five plus two seventy plus was doing like ten backflips in a row and stuff, like super freak. He could do anything on the football field. And, you know, if you remember his time with the New York Giants and, you know, even recently, I mean, he had 11 and a half sacks two years ago. So he's a super athlete for a guy his size, kind of the similar way I view Greg Russo. And he's a guy also that can play up and down the defensive line with his size, his power. So I, I feel like there is. There's a similar thing. He lo- he just looked kind of like a slender Jason Pierre Paul coming out of college. Like there's just they don't make athletes that size and athleticism too often. So I know this isn't about Greg Rousseau, but I, I just can't help myself because you've uh, you've got me so excited <laughs> with saying that Greg might be a, an early pick. Yeah. I mean, have you have you watched enough of Quincy Roche to to give us a, a take on him? I know you haven't broken him down probably as thoroughly as you will. Um, but I mean, is, is he first round potential as well? Yeah. Uh, so I, I live, I live right over the bridge from temple. I'm about 20 minutes out of temple. So I've, I've seen Quincy live, like at, at actual games before. And I'll tell you that dude's super talented. I, I'm, I'm so excited to see him paired with Greg. And I know you guys got Jalen Phillips coming back too. So you guys, I mean, that tandem, I would I would be hard-pressed to find a better three-man tandem in in the in uh, all of college football as far as edge guys. So, yeah, I, I think Quincy could definitely be that caliber. He's he's a he's not quite the the greatest athlete in the world from from my viewing, but he's got some advanced hand usage. He just he's a smart rusher who understands leverage points and I'm I'm really excited. I mean, I just I just asked somebody today who actually covers Temple football and I just said, you know, what are we expecting this year from from Gregory Russo and, and Quincy when they get down to uh, to Miami? And he, he said that uh, there, I don't think that there's going to be a better defensive end tandem in college football this year. Jeez, oh, you're making me so excited. I'm going to I'm gonna have to dump a cold bucket of water on my head after this. <laughs> the future is bright, man. The future is bright <laughs> down there, I think. Oh, you yeah, got, yeah. And you guys got De'Ara King coming in now, too. So, you know, it, we'll see what happens. We got Dara King. We got Rhett Lashley. We have the pieces. Um, and and this is just a, another question. Have you watched um, much tape? And this is uh, another potential first rounder in 2021. Tight end Brevin Jordan. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I've I've seen Brevin. I I've, I've seen the other tight end. I know a lot of people like too the Mallory kid. Uh, Brevin is the early. I mean, between him and and Fryermuth from Penn State, they're the early favorites for tight end one. Brevin is like, you don't make athletes like that at tight end too often. I've seen you guys throw bubble screens to him. Like he is a super athletic kid. So yeah, I, I definitely have 
Brevin on my radar. I've already made my my list for, you know, positional kind of guys to watch for 2021 starting that pretty soon. So Brevin was was one of the top two guys at tight end that I was looking at in the uh, I know Florida University of Florida has a kid named Pitts. That's pretty good, too. So, yes, Brevin is he's okay. firmly on my radar and he's an athletic freak as well. So I didn't know there was any other schools in Florida besides Miami. I'll, I'll <laughs> on that. Um, okay, so last question, um, just for the Miami Dolphins fans out there. I know they're uh, very anxious about this upcoming draft. Um, you think the Dolphins end up with Tua, or what's going to happen at, at their quarterback spot? Oh, man, it's it's so t- – I mean, is Tua worthy of that pick? 100% he is. I mean, I feel like if he was completely healthy, there were no health concerns, I, I think that he would honestly have a, a little bit of a battle between him and Burrow, but – if he's there at five, I think you pull the trigger. I really do. My, my dad's a Miami Dolphins fan, so I, I talk to him about this a whole lot. And, uh, you know, I, I feel like if if you tell me that the the, the hip is not a, a major concern, it's not a long, long, you know, long concern for the uh, for the future of Tua. I feel like you take him if he's there at five. Now, the question is, is he going to be there? Uh, that is, you know, there's a couple of trade up options. We'll see, you know, with the chargers and the Panthers maybe moving up, who knows what happened in there. Like there's a couple teams that, that I know will have a high interest in him as well. Um, so if he, if he's ever five, you got to go him. If he's not though, I'm a little scared about what might happen for that pick. Yeah. You think, uh, I mean, are you taking Justin Herbert or Jordan love? If, if you don't have uh two on the board. All right, ready for another hot take, man. I got Jordan Love as my third-ranked quarterback. I would be willing to roll with it. Um, now, five is a little rich for my blood um, for Jordan Love. I, I gave him a first-round grade, but not a high first-round grade. I, I do like a lot of the tools to work with. I gave Herbert a, a late first-round grade as well. He is very toolsy. He's got seemingly all the talent. There's just something missing there. Like It's just something from a from – a, 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 a just natural understanding of concepts, being able to throw to different leverages. Like there's just something missing with him that he scares me so much. Um, so, I, I mean, even though Jordan Love had the down year, I'd be willing to gamble on those traits because you see it like it's there and he, you know, natural accurate accuracy. He has everything. So yeah. I, I feel like, I feel like though, if, if two is not there, I might consider a trade back option. If something's on the, if it's something's on the possibility for me. No, I'm I'm definitely with you there on uh, on love over Herbert. I I actually went to school uh, Utah State, uh, okay. so yeah, so I I saw love quite a bit, and mm. uh, you know I'm just not a Herbert fan, so I'm with you there. Awesome. Okay. How, okay. how do you like um if if uh have you have you um have you seen any tapes over the last couple of years? I, I wonder if your opinion on David Woodward because I'm really struggling like why why no one's talking about him much i like this tape a little bit the linebacker from utah state it's kind of odd that no one's talking about him much well, you know honestly utah i <laughs> i didn't i didn't watch uh enough of their you know I, i'd tune in and pay attention to jordan love and stuff especially when they had the great year two years ago with uh the the dudes at texas tech now i can't think david of their name yost. yeah david yost and and uh matt wells um yes. but honestly i I couldn't give you an educated opinion on, on that dude. I, you know, mostly uh, focusing on Miami football. So. Oh, okay. gotcha. Okay. Ryan, this, okay. The, I promise this is, this is the last question. Um, so yeah. So Jordan and I were both uh, diehard Canes fans. I'm from South Florida, but we both live in Utah. So, and I, I, I love the Utes. Um, what are your thoughts on Zach Moss? Uh, I, I actually interviewed Zach before. Uh, he's an awesome dude. Um, I, I feel like there's a lot of things, you know, just from injury perspective, he's been banged up a little bit. He didn't have a great combine showing, which, you know, I really wasn't worried about, but I, I really do like Zach a whole lot. I feel like he's a, he's at least a first and second down runner and it, there is no better contact balance in this class than him. I mean, that dude, there is absolute effort. And, you know, it was, it was one quick note from my interview with him a while ago was he told me his favorite running back was Marshawn Lynch. And it makes complete sense with how he runs. That dude runs angry. So I'm a big fan of Zach. Not sure where he'll end up being pegged just because of the injury concerns, but he's definitely a guy that could be a lead ball carrier at the next level. Awesome. That's awesome. But yeah, he's, he was a, he's a South Florida kid too. He actually was committed to Miami at one point And, uh, when I covered the Utes, uh, I got to sit down with him and, and some of the other Utes that are going to be drafted. So 
um, yeah, they got it. They got a, a good class. But Ryan, thank you so, so much. This interview was awesome, man. We may be hitting you up in the future to come back on, but, uh, but uh, thank you so much for uh, taking the time to work out the schedule. I know it was kind of, uh, kind of difficult there uh, for a minute, but yeah, just thank you again, brother. Oh, I, pr I appreciate you guys, man. Uh, anytime you want to bring me back.